Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and today I'm joined with Ozaki. You are an independent game developer, uh, kind of up and coming, I guess, in your field. Uh, so far, you've developed uh, three games, all of which are hosted on itch.io i think is how you say the name yes okay. yes yeah itch.io uh and i'm showcasing footage of two of your games here today ozaki how are you doing today i'm fine uh, i don't see it right now but i'm curious to know which uh, games did you pick um i i can't i i don't remember the names of them but it's like the one where you're playing as like a penguin chasing around ice cream cones and then the other one's like you're shooting um, mice as like a cookie oh, yeah. yeah actually um, why didn't you show the third show which one like you know there were three there and uh just asking oh um i i, I tried playing like the it, it was the one inspired by like the minecraft uh yeah april yeah. fools right i honestly that gameplay just wasn't for me <laughs> I, I liked uh, yeah. the other two just a bit more. It just kind of goes more with um, what I like. But um, so, so, how are you doing today? I'm doing quite well. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, I know I gave you a very brief introduction, but I guess if you want to kind of expand on that a bit and explain in your own words uh, what you do and what motivates the content that you create. I develop games, like, it's mostly for fun, like, I really enjoy doing it, and, uh, yeah, like, currently, I have a, a very small kind of popularity, like, I have a very highly inactive community, it's inactive, like, but uh, not something really big. And I really hope for it to become big one day when I also release my more serious games. Right, and uh, I actually joined um, your Discord, and I think you said that this was kind of like um, you said this was like yeah. the first season of games for you, and that like for yeah. like the, your future projects, you kind of want to expand uh, bigger, right? Yeah. Well, awesome. Uh, so I, I guess uh, I, I don't know how far out you have these ideas necessarily planned out, but I, I guess could you give my audience and maybe even some people from your own audience kind of a preview of that or kind of expand on what what yeah. those projects might entail? Like the, the future project. Yeah, the, the bigger projects that you're talking about, like in the, in the future. One of them... Uh... The first, uh, I don't know much about this, because uh, if you happen to know about the Good Geese, uh, the Good Geese company, like, it's not a company, it's a small studio, which hosts one jam, uh, like, every autumn and every spring, and uh, that game is going to be about the, spring, the autumn one. And the other game is a visual novel, which... I'm not going to tell a lot about because it's a highly unique experience from what I know. There's nothing like it. Yeah, what you I, can't even give us like vague details about like what makes it unique or anything like that? No, because that's something you'll have to find out yourself because it's really an important part of the experience that you find it out yourself. Hmm. Okay. I mean, wouldn't that make it kind of, uh, I mean, like a harder sell, though, to kind of have, uh, just to kind of, like, leave it as a surprise? I I'm just asking in general. I don't know the nature of, like, game marketing. Like I, like, I understand, like, some mechanical aspects have to be kept under wraps for the sake of, like, you know, when you advertise or promote a game. But I, I, I guess... Um, so it's a visual novel that has a mechanic that you can't really like discuss or, or am I getting that right? Or Yeah, it's not really a mechanic. It's more of the way the story branches, but, uh, but yeah, something that is kind of secret. Okay. Um, focusing a bit on your background, which uh, I'm always kind of curious to see how 
people kind of get to where they are. I'm curious about like, you know, essentially I always call it like kind of completing the story, but, um, so is game development something that you've studied more on a like collegiate or like a scholastically level, or is it something that you just do that you've done more as just a hobby for yourself? It's, Mainly the second one. Yeah, like totally the second one. I didn't really learn game development officially. I learned coding, but not game development. Right. And I think that's, I mean, to be fair, I think that's how it is for, uh, I think, a lot of game developers is because, you know, yeah. um, it's only in recent years, or I guess not recent years, but, you know, a, a lot of like, especially older game developers i'm talking like 90s 2000s stuff like that um most of them got in mainly through like kind of a coding programming f field broadly and you know there wasn't like really an expansion of teaching specifically video game development to like you know later um but, yeah. uh, but do you have an interest in expanding your knowledge by like pursuing that type of study for yourself Perhaps because currently I use Game Maker, which is a, which is not the the most advanced one, but it's pretty easy to use. Like if you happen to know Undertale or Delta Run, for example, that's that was made in Game Maker. Like that is something that most a dedicated fan of these games would know. Right. Okay. But, so it, it is part like. Um... It is possible to build like these more in engaging experiences, even though a lot of people would see this as like a simpler engine. Is what I'm taking yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, that there are some engines that are more difficult to use and some which are easier. And generally, those are that are more difficult to use are used in more uh, sophisticated games. For example, there's that uh, like. On one end of the spectrum, there's Scratch. Do you, ha do you know it with the orange cat? And basically, it's block coding. Now, it's very easy to make a game using Scratch. But uh, on the other side, there are things like Unity and Unreal and even harder stuff, which, is, which requires a lot of mastering for a... For games but i think a main reason that i might use unity is because a uh, game maker cannot really do 3d games well because you need to be very smart it only draws in 2d right um so i i guess I guess kind of focusing on the current projects you have completed, uh, it's it's interesting to see uh, so far, uh, at least from my experience playing these games, kind of like, I guess, stylistic similarities between them, you know, um, like the 2D pixel style, the, um, I, I guess, like, kind of like the time limit to designate, like, you know, how long you can, like, stay in the game. Like, you have, like, the... I don't, I don't know what you would call it in the penguin game like the freeze meter or something where like if you don't eat an ice cream for too long eventually just like yeah. it results in a game over condition for you um i would i would actually call it the hunger because uh, because ice cream doesn't uh, make you warmer it just makes you full or something okay right but um so i i guess uh how would you seeing like your current stylistic choices you know again with like the 2d pixel and stuff like that how would you kind of um expand on your style like would you stick with like um i i guess are there any type of mechanics that you want to explore but you haven't been able to either due to like just um not being not knowledgeable in how to program those mechanics or anything like that it's uh, currently, in Game Maker, there's almost nothing I can't do. Like, 3D is very difficult, but uh, if I really want to, I can do a lot of games. Like, very co complicated game season. But, uh, what I wanted to say 
is that the the well, I had a blackout. No, you're good. Uh, you're good. Yeah. So uh, the style is not limited. It's not limiting. It's a. Uh, I think a uh, style like a. Uh, Art style, whether it's 2D, 3D, uh, and uh, pixelated, low poly, realistic. No, it doesn't really limit the game mechanics themselves. Like, you can have very complex and uh, interesting mechanics using like pixel art and uh, even simpler than what I did. But you can also have a realistic game that's very basic. Like uh, the like okay, n- never mind. Uh, that's a topic I don't know whether to get into now. I mean, we have like, plenty of time. We have uh, at least um, usually it lasts about an hour. I, I guess I should have asked. Uh, I don't know how long you necessarily have yourself, but we we have plenty of time basically. So go ahead. So uh, basically, uh, I prefer uh, stylistic games which don't have 3d graphics like it's not about being 3d it's about being realistic like you know gta pubg realistic right right but i prefer stylish games that have a that have a more cartoony art style or a pixelated one like minecraft or uh, or undertale uh, I did play FNAF once, but I didn't really like it. But, uh, you know, this kind of graphic, it's not really realistic. Like, maybe FNAF is not there. Never mind. So, the point is, I'm trying to talk about is that uh, stylistic games live longer. What do I mean by that? When they have realistic graphics, the standard always uh, goes up, like with computers. And uh, it 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 sometimes reaches a level where most computers can't handle it, like uh, you know, cyberpunk, right? Yeah, yeah. So stylistic characters live on longer because uh, the standard the change the standard doesn't change. They're already below the realism standard, so they don't so they don't need to go up. Do you get what I mean? Right, yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of goes with, like, this broader trend I've seen. Well, especially on, like, social media of, like, you know, with the this news of, like, you know, we get, like, uh, the news cycle of, like, oh, this game had, like, a lot of grind going into its development, and you get people saying, and you get, like, that, like, joke image post of, like, Sonic, and he's like, I want worse-looking games um taking longer time to make or it's something like that i i can't remember the full quote but it's kind of like in this broader movement of people basically saying that like it's not so much that we want like realistic games that like you know take a lot of resources like time and money to develop but rather we would much rather go for like stylistic games that you know are just more engaging on their own yeah. um in their own regard um so so i guess you, th- that's kind of like your perspective on it too is that you know you don't really want this pursuit necessarily of realism because you think that uh yeah. style like or like stylized graphics is what is like kind of more longer lasting yeah, yeah. Uh, and the, uh, by the way i also had something to tell that for example that about itch.io, which uh, it's kind of it's kind of a difficult site because everything there, almost everything I see, it's ca- kind of on a schedule. It's either very nice or it's like total. Uh, can I say bad words here? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I just had to put the dim markers and you know saying that this is it contains like explicit language but yeah go ahead yeah like south demand just total crap 
and I'm not meaning to insult, but a, a lot of games which I see are I don't look very a lot of effort, which again they might have a lot of effort, but uh, like it's always like the first few games are not really uh, like if from my my experience like. Before these games, I had like another game, which I'm not sure what to do with it now, because uh, it's like it was very kind of buggy, and it was it also contained some difficult systems to change, so and a lot of old code. Basically, uh, it was a, it was mediocre, like it, it was mediocre a bit better than mediocre on like gameplay but the the engine was like behind the scene it was like an absolute mess so I, so I ultimately it just canned it uh yeah it's currently like yeah so do you have anything else to ask like um, well, I do. Do I have any more to ask in relation to that, or just in general? G general. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, actually, quite a few, uh, few things. Um, so you you mentioned right there that you kind of had um, uh, like that that was a, an example of a project that you kind of had to unfortunately do away with because it just wasn't panning out in the way that you wanted to. But I, I guess uh. Do you, do you have any other projects that also met like similar fates that you feel like okay discussing here that like you know you wanted to kind of pursue this idea but for one reason or another okay. it just couldn't it just didn't pan out for you? Okay. So uh there's one that like there are two of them. One of them is uh, something that was planned for the first season that was actually released for for a little while because it was for a game jam, but uh, then I just uh, took it off the shelf because there was a plan to remake it for the first season, but, uh, it's, but uh, they decided to not make, remake it for the first season. Instead, I, and I gave it play, its place to Icy Nicey, the one with the penguins and the ice cream, you know. And the other is a is a is a kind of a fighter game which was a hand drawn like the graphics were hand drawn but they but they, it didn't really match up quite well because they, they, because of some technical problems and uh, it didn't like a like a, I did scrap it but the characters that were there. Are going into like a very big project that was planned for like I don't know, like a very distant time. Mm. I, I guess also speaking about the art of your games because I know like in game development you have kind of this you know separation of like duties, uh, <laughs> duty. Sorry, um, but uh, you have this separation of like tasks, and I know that your background is in coding, but. Um, I, I guess. I also did the art. You okay? Yeah. yeah, that's what I was gonna get. At. So you also do the art for the games. Yes. Um, I I guess kind of. I guess I'm curious then about like the creation of like uh, the art for these games because obviously you at the moment have this very specific style of like you know kind of pixelated graphics. Um, but I guess what goes into the creation of the the assets for these for these games. For you, uh, yeah. Uh, first thing, I have this app called Asaprite. Did you hear of it? I've never heard of it. Like, oh. It's a Pixar software. It costs money. Initially, I had like a pirated version of it, but it was so good that I actually bought the full version because uh, it was because I kind of felt dirty for doing it for free. You know. And, right. uh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I use no. it. 
and I use it for the games. Now, uh, now I mostly use the uh, like endoscope palettes, like the color palettes that you see are uh, from in in this like the certain uh, set of colors that I really like to use. Uh, also, uh, one game that I think for me stands out from the rest is Cookie Crusade because of the eyes. They're, they're kind of, if, <laughs> wait, sorry. Uh, okay. Even if they're just uh, two, like the change in the eyes, it's like instead of one pixel, it's two. And it's actually a pretty big change for me. It's, it looks like a, a little change, like a big change. Like, that's why it stands out for me, personally. Um, do you have anything else to ask? Maybe about the like, projects, like, themselves? Um, yeah, it, it's actually funny. Um, to, like, kind of tease this episode, I posted, uh, like, with a bunch of friends, like, the sprite of, like, the cookie from that game. And one guy actually thought it was, like, it looked like an old band. And looking at the sprite, I could kind of see it. Not not to say that the sprite is bad. It's just it, it's kind of funny, um, you know, uh, like I'm like just the different it. perspective of it because he did he had no context that uh, it was like a cookie game. But I could see it, like one of the cookie chips looked like a hair swirl, like of a balding guy. You know what I mean? Oh, no, I can see it a bit, kinda. Um, but uh. I guess um, from a kind of design standpoint, I, I guess the game that uh, I spent, I think the most time with, I'm, I'm trying to remember here, was I think the Penguin one, only because, yeah. you know, um, I, I found it, I guess, like the most approachable. I, I mean, I, not to say that the cookie one really wasn't in of itself, but um, I don't know, the, the Penguin one, it was just like, you know, I like Pac-Man, and I, I think, like, you know, obviously there's, yeah. like, some inspiration there, in a sense. Um, yeah. I gotta say, though, I did like how it, it kind of subverted it in the sense that, like, you know, it's instead of you picking up the pellets to, like, eat the ghosts, it's, like, you kind of preventing um, the ice cream from eating the pellets so they don't eat you. Yeah. Uh, um, by the way... I uh, just wanted to say that uh, I am playing a bit of an upgrade for this game, which will include music and sound effects. But the uh, main point is that uh, the, these are not exactly pellets; these are cherries. Oh right, cherry. I mean, it's, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm I'm using like pell pellets in the same like to tie oh, yeah. like like you know um, mechanically like to describe it in the same way that like you know how it's used in Pac Man, but um. I guess, uh, so I guess, I guess kind of tying it back to the art, why did you decide for this game, like, with this, like, baseline of this mechanic to go with, like, ice cream fighting against, like, a snowman, or, uh, not snowman, uh, sorry, a penguin? Okay, so, I have to do a little break, like, two, two seconds, and I'm back with you, okay? Okay, I guess I'll take this time to, uh read the little ad break so uh for longtime listeners of the show today's episode is brought to you by salty llama are you tired of lugging around heavy bottles of detergent and dealing with the mess of measuring the right amount introducing salty llama the ultra concentrated hypoallergenic and toxins free laundry detergent strips that are revolutionizing the industry their eco-friendly strips are easy to use just toss one in with your laundry and you're good to go with Salty Llama, you can say goodbye to harsh chemicals and hello to a cleaner, greener laundry experience. But it's not just good for the environment, it's good for you and your family. Their hypoallergenic formula is gentle on sensitive skin, making it perfect for babies, kids, and adults with allergies. Don't just take my word for it. Give Salty Llama a try and see the difference for yourself. You'll be amazed at how powerful and effective the detergent strips are. Visit www.saltyllama.com and order yours today. And don't forget to use the code PODCASTPASTA at checkout for a special discount. Again, that's www. Yeah, wow. www.saltylama.com, and uh, the code is podcast pasta. They gave it to me in all caps. I'm not sure if their website really checks for that, but that's a thing to keep in mind. Um, I don't think he's back yet. Hello. 
Okay, yeah, I'm back. Okay, great. We just finished the ad read. Um, so I don't know if you remember the question that we left off on. Uh, say it again? It was basically, I was wondering, um, uh, with the whole concept of like preventing like the ice cream from picking up the cherries, I, I guess, why did you specifically go with like ice cream versus like a penguin as opposed to like some other concept? Okay, so I had this idea for like it, it was kind of a random idea because it, I was kind of inspired, maybe just just a bit uh, inspired by uh, you know bad ice cream, like uh, another browser game. It's not mine. It's some. Um, it's it's a bit popular. It's a it's popular. I get, I think it's uh, about an. No, never mind. Uh, what I wanted to say is that there wasn't really a reason behind the connection, actually. Yeah, that and, was just like the first thing that came to your mind for it? Yeah. Like, I wanted... A, like, I thought about a game that uh, is focused, as, as focused around the themes of ice and, you know, coldness. But, and uh, that's what I came up with. Also, it was a, a submission for the 2023 GMTK Jam. Do you happen to... Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's like a yearly jam by uh, Game Maker's Toolkit. It's not related to Game Maker, but uh, it's really... It's uh, some uh, group that also does these kind of competitions. So, I didn't really win a high mark, but... Uh, but it's but uh, it was a fun experience to participate in a game development a uh, competition. Oh, it, it was like two days. Right. I had two days to complete the game, so it's actually a pretty interesting experience for those of you who like to develop games. I suggest uh, joining some game jams. So you do like game jams in general. Um, yes. because, uh, I don't know, I think, like, I, I get the appeal of them, like, the whole challenge of, like, oh, you have, like, X days to, like, kind of develop a game, and I think you do get some, like, really cool concepts out of it, but I, I could see how some developers might not like it because it's kind of, I guess, rushing a process that necessarily shouldn't be, like, rushed, I guess, if that makes sense, or, um, I, I, I guess, it, it, would that be, like, a fair assessment, like, for some people to, like, yeah. n for, like, some developers to not necessarily like game jams? Yeah, but, uh, the funny thing, uh, like, thing is, uh, there's something called, uh, like, you can make a very basic game, you can literally make, like, you can even make a character jumping over a hole, and that's it. Like one whole one character just jumping. And um, that would be enough for a game jam. Right. Like, uh, yeah, I got it. So it obviously de depends on like a multitude of factors. But um, do you, I, I mean, I, I guess just so I know, like how many game jams have you participated in? Uh, two of them like two are actually completed okay no because i i would just say um i i, I guess i'm just curious um like uh i wonder if like these game jams are going to be like i guess on a technical level are going to be like harder to like even at a base level like i guess compete in i mean granted i know it's yeah. not like a competition a, a lot of it's just like in good fun but like you know as the general skill level for like game developers in terms of like coding in terms of like you know making games goes up that like what people expect from these game jams like the quality is just going to like increase like that yeah do you do you follow what i mean uh not really just uh, can you explain like in like a very basic like in le like no well, I guess what I'm saying is, like, uh, I, I guess I'm worried about, like, as, you know, the skill 
I'm I'm trying to remember what the what the term is called. Like the skill floor is kind of raised for game jams because you get like a lot of like because I I find like with game development like obviously I think and I don't know maybe maybe I'm missing like some part of like the history of it but I imagine like game developers of today. <laughs> could just easily floor developers from like the 90s or 2000s right in terms of like because you know as like technology develops i feel like you know the coding and the programming um knowledge has becomes, to like like increases exponentially as you deal with more complex you know um programming languages and things like that um or programming models and things like that so i i, I guess i'm just kind of wondering will it ever be an issue where like the floor is raised so much that like independent developers will have a harder time kind of breaking into like this industry or to even break into like game jams with their own ideas because they'll just you know be cut off immediately from it i, I guess if that okay so by terms of coding it doesn't there's, it's not really an issue because uh, as the coding the, uh, coding doesn't become more uh, more uh, difficult because you can pick always pick uh, lower engines which use the like easier codes. It but uh, it is hard there to get into the industry because of the, for example, in Chitatio, there's a. Uh, it's very flooded with a lot of content. Some of it is like very, uh, like a lot of it is uh, not very high quality to say the least. And uh, uh, the other thing, uh, a lot of the games that do make it are specifically horror meme games, which uh, it's a, uh, each kind of picks games of a specific genre or like what is successful so it's hard for new things that are not the best to compete to understand what i mean right i got what you're saying is... yeah yeah that I, that that makes more sense i was just because i i don't have that much like coding knowledge in terms of like video games so i was just wondering if that if that would ever be an issue for developers in like approaching it in like um you know, having to like develop more complex code to like compete in these things, but so so for you, the broader issue is more so just like an oversaturation of the market broadly. Yeah. 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 We, yes. Hmm. Okay. No. Yeah. That 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 definitely does make sense. Um. I, I guess another question that I have to then kind of talking about like you know general game development is that um at least from my understanding i don't know if uh you have no more knowledge on this than than me but um there there seems to be like a lot of burnout in the video game industry you know developers like you get like the fastest turnover for this industry for a, a number of different reasons but um I guess, I guess for yourself, is that something that you're ever worried about if you continue to pursue like this as, I guess, even beyond a hobby or as like a potential career for yourself? Uh, currently not, but, uh, but I think I can, like, I'm also pretty interested in animation sometimes. It's kind of, it's kind of comes in phases. So if I get a little tired of game development, I, I can switch to other forms of media, or even like, or even just take a break until I uh, become a. Yeah. So. But that that is another industry that also has its own burnout, right? Animation, from my understanding. Yeah. Yeah. So. But, but I guess then I have to ask, um, is, is this something that you want to pursue, like, necessarily as a career for yourself, or are you kind of just leaving it open? I really hope, like, currently, it's the ideal career, but, uh, but uh, the future will do what the future will do, what, like... 
you know what they mean. Yeah, so you you're just kind of wanting to pan out and or just wanting to wait for it to just kind of for time to pan out and see what you want to do according to that. Yeah. Um but let's say hypothetically you do pursue this as a career. Uh do you have any like dream developers you want to work for or would you want to stay independent? I actually wish to be like to open up my own studio like with other members working for me. That's like the great wish, but uh, yeah, I really wish to to own like the studio I'm working in. Um, like the studio I will work in. If you were to pursue that, like creating your own studio, um, how, how would you distinguish yourself from other like independent or like any other like game studio? Well, my studio will be more open to ideas, like, from outside. It will, like, there won't be much uh, sitting around and brainstorming. There would actually be more, like, a working from people who have a game idea, but they make a very good idea that, that they want to sell, but, uh, and would probably work with them. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so, but you also do see other studios kind of trying to take that approach, right? Like, I, I don't know if you've heard of like video game donkey. This is like granted old news, and I don't know um, how far it's necessarily panned out. But he's done like the whole big mode studio where it's kind of like the same approach that he wants to kind of be more open to like these smaller ideas from you know developers or just like you know. Uh, ideas from developers in general, but uh, so do you think you would be able to like? I, I guess with that com approach, like reasonably compete in like a market that you said yourself is kind of oversaturated. I hope I w I will be able to. I I can, but uh, that requires a lot of effort and to really make my game stand out because. Uh, after, like, my games will be, like, the perfect degree on each tail, like, I'm playing to, I'm still playing to update some more. After the first and second, maybe third season are released. And then, uh, and then work maybe another job in order to gain money for essentially releasing to Steam, which is a much more expensive one to release to. Well, yeah, and I, I hope you do um, achieve that because I know, like, uh, I, God, I can't remember. I looked it up a long time ago, but, like, what what were the rules for hosting on Steam? Like, you have to, like, pay, like, a monthly fee or, or I, God, I can't remember. It's not monthly. It's, like, one time $100. Ah, uh, right. Um, so people will just uh, go uh, sending their, like, low-quality games, like, on each tail. It's completely free to post right right um god only a hundred dollars i i wonder if they'll ever have to change that you know because uh i i imagine as server costs go up that's be like more of a consideration if they'll just it's not about server costs it's like setting a bar for quality well that too right um but, I mean, I guess just with the increased in cost of the things broadly, do you think they would ever have to, like, raise the cost? Of that? I mean, I imagine they probably would eventually, right? Yeah, probably. Um, so, you do have your own uh, Discord server. Um, yeah, but... Where you post, like, the progress of, um, you know, yeah. your, your projects. So, so... What do you think kind of justifies, uh, like, posting an update to? Like, what do you think is, like, a change that is, like, big enough to where it's like, oh, I gotta post this to? Or is it just, like, you'll post, like, any, like, update to these games, like, on the, like, Discord? So, I usually uh, do an update where, like... I can do several things at one time and then I release. Like, because it takes time to compile and release. Like, it's five minutes, but it's still time. So, uh, 
because I want to do like a batch upgrade, not with the, a lot of little features. Like you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I get you. It's just um, I, I'm always curious because I, I wonder what is the like line. Like I imagine it's like kind of more of a subjective line of like, okay, what is a big enough update to justify like like a post or like a full like up like a full like updated version of a game i guess if that makes sense uh, say it again uh, sorry i need a little break just um well yeah sure it's just like uh because you know how like in in game development you have like uh or like especially modern game development you have like games that are like let's say like in early access for like a long time and for the most part it like it feels like a completed project but for whatever reason it's not like it's not like removed and released like as a full version and i guess i wonder for like your own games how do you make that kind of distinction between like okay version 0 0.1 and like 0 0.2 or something like that it's like it's actually, it's actually the difference between seasons. Say, like in the first and second season, there are not going to be any upgrade to previous games. But I don't know. Like every time we do like an update, like then yeah, uh, I don't know. Why. Do you have anything else? Um, but that, but is that just unique to you? Because I imagine a lot of other developers don't necessarily follow like that model for them. It's, um, oh, if we introduce like a major mechanical upgrade, then we, um, put that out as its own like, uh, version release. So, uh, I'm guessing, um, I guess for you, why do you specifically, uh, focus on like this whole seasonal model for yourself? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little tired right now because uh, it's a. Uh, it is late for you, right? It's 9:45 p.m. Oh, I uh, well, I do apologize. I, I know that there's like a large time difference for us. Um, if if you yeah. want, we could cut the the interview here. Like, I do have enough for a, a solid episode. Uh, maybe, but. Uh, uh, I wanted to ask him, uh, for what I got there, you enjoyed the games, right? That you enjoyed the, uh, that I enjoyed the games? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. thought they were very fun. Um, like, uh, how, how would you describe it? Like, pickup experiences, you know? Like, I, I like how, you know, it's just something that you could just quickly load up and, like, just play, yeah. like, a few rounds. And I found myself, uh, especially with the Penguin one, because I have, like, such a like uh just a casual i for myself like such a casual appreciation of like pac-man like i'm not a pro pac-man player myself but i always do appreciate like the simplicity of it but yet yeah, how intense the gameplay can feel and how the penguin game kind of takes like a similar concept and like a, like i said like flips it with like you basically blocking the ghosts from getting the pellets i thought was really fun I have a question. Oh, uh, God. So, um, which which score did you get? Um, uh, I I played it like a few different times. I think the highest I got was like two hundred. I would have to like look over the footage for the uh, podcast here, but um, for the penguin game and i apologize that i don't like have i don't memorize the name off the and top of my head i see nicey i see i see i see nicey i see nicey sorry sorry um i think it was like 250 and was my like main high score uh, i i can't and remember cookie off the crusade, top of and in the cookie crusade it was a uh, the cookies one how much um I think just two hundred. I don't know. I struggled more with like the the cookie one myself. 
Yeah, yeah, I can understand. Um, not not to say that's like poorly developed or anything. It, it's not. It's just like I, I guess for me, it was. Um, I think in terms of strategy, I tried going for like two approaches. One was like af- actively pursuing like the mice to like uh, kill them, and then the other one was just like hovering around the milk thing to wait for it to fill up and just letting the mice like come to me but i would have uh the mice are fast on the ladder can i say that <laughs> yeah like, like i've had moments is... where i like climb up a ladder and i think okay i'm like a decent distance away to not be killed and then they just climb up and like just instantly destroy me and i'm like damn that's unfortunate yeah i can understand uh so, do you have any finishing words? Like, do you, how do you close it? Um, oh, just uh, in general, yeah. Uh, for everyone listening, thank you so much um, for joining us. If you want to support the show, you could do so in a number of different ways. Uh, I have a Patreon account for um, monthly donations that... Uh, and I would recommend doing that for monthly donations because you have different tiers and I think like the two higher tiers give you like a a form of merchandise Uh, but all the tiers give you uh, your name read aloud in the credits section here uh, which uh, but I don't have any patrons at the moment so the section is uh, left blank Uh, if you want to do a one time donation I would recommend Ko-Fi Ko-Fi lets you do monthly but again I would recommend Patreon more for that uh, all this is linked on my, well, it's not called Twitter anymore. It's my X account, um, at podcasting pasta. Again, that's at podcasting pasta, all one word. The P's are capitalized. I'm not sure if that matters for X. Um, uh, I also have a merch store with, uh, a lot of artwork feature, uh, featuring the work of George Isaac. He's a frequent collaborator on the show. Um, but again, all this is linked on my X account. Uh, Ozaki, if you want to shout out where people can find you, where people can find your work. Okay, so it's basically just a, 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 let me check it. It's Ozaki a, hyphen studio dot each dot I think. No, I'm not sure. Like, never mind. It's Oza- it's uh, my website on each detail. Just search Ozaki game on each detail, and you'll find it. And um, also, oh sorry, go ahead. Also, my Discord. Like, if you want to DM me, it's like Oz- Ozaki games. I think like my tag. Maybe you can find. Never mind. I don't know how it works. Um, well, and, uh, I will provide the links to all this in the episode descriptions, both on, um, Spotify as well as, uh, YouTube. Uh, Zaki, thank you so much for, uh, joining us. Um, thank you for hosting me. And, um, thank you to Salty Llama for sponsoring the episode. Once again, that's www.saltylama.com, uh, promo code podcast pasta, all capitalized. I'm not sure if it really matters for the website, but, um, yeah, thank you all so much for joining us, and we I will join you um, next time. I'm not sure when the next episode's going to be, but uh, yeah, take care, everyone. Bye.